and I pushed that anthem capstone out. Then I slept four hours. Then I went and started running errands and groceries and getting ready because we always babysit over the weekend. Then did the lawn, and then it just like we rode and we rode and rode. I did get some downtime to be fair, but sadly the stream just did not get to fit in there. But it's okay, because it's better to fucking be nice and fresh going into three than it is to be completely a zombie. And with two weeks left, hey, you never know. You never know. What we need to do is the Hammerlock DLC. Nine minutes of, like, making Borderlands 3 video. Oh, yeah? Is it good, Adam? Was it a good? I made this for you, blah, blah, blah. So it sounds like you weren't too taken with it. Oh, you liked it a lot. Oh, okay. Blah, blah, blah made me feel like, oh, okay. It wasn't, wasn't that good, huh? Uh, that can't be right. Oh, there we go. 46. And 27. I really need to do something with those times. Oh, well. Oh, here we go. I should have ran over to the damn stash. I I really liked this DLC. One two, <laughs> when I did it, people hated it, but I was personally a fan. I thought the writing was funny. I thought the map was really cool looking. I thought the new enemies were fun. I thought this DLC was largely better than than. Um, I gotta refresh my memory on Bunkers and Badasses, but back then, I liked this better than Bunkers and Badasses. It's short, yeah, but it's got that whole, like, Apocalypse Now, Heart of Darkness theme to it, where it's like Kurtz. Handsome Jack might still be alive in the jungle, and you find out it's Professor Nagasaki. And It's short, yeah, but it introduced a couple raid bosses that were really hard. It's got some cool enemies. Is there an achievement for spawning, Super Dude? Can you remember Adam? I hope there isn't, because I know he's a pain in the ass to spawn. Raid bosses were tough as hell. Fun challenge. Jokes in this always hit well and, and made me laugh. Yeah, yeah, is there an achievement for the triple O spawn? Because I sure hope not, because he's a pain in the ass. This is not going to be as have often stated, like the ultimate OP-10 run and we're gonna fucking save the world. This is just about being a completionist before 3 comes out. I've done it before. I did it back on the 360, but I'm just hoping I don't have to do it again. Most of the achievements that I did on the 360 version, you know, none of those, like, transferred over. Very, very few of them. Kinda sucks. Wait, vehicle depot. Perfect. I don't think I have to spawn him, though. I'm pretty sure all these DLCs pretty much work the same. Do all the quests. Do the main story. Find all the areas. Do all the quests. Like, I'm nearly positive. They just follow the exact same cycle. Vita dug it out. I'm like, damn, this is fugly. Dude, I forgot they released that on the Vita. Holy crap. How well does it function? Um, girls gotta eat. Done that. I mean, all the side missions, but I don't think spawning triple O counts as that. I'm pretty sure they follow the same thing. The 30 takes a lot to get used to. But 30 FPS takes a lot to get used to. That's what we were so used to. Field of view is horrendous. I thought it ran it like I saw like 15 frames per second. I thought it was really rough. Really, really rough. <clears throat> like it... I mean, it stretched the 360 to the limit, so you'd imagine it stretches the Vita to the absolute fucking brink of explosion. You know, any moment now it's gonna cause the heat death of the universe. Surprised Adam Sessler's not here to call this racist because it features tribes.
Both these are legit drops. Both those heralds drop for us. We got one in the pirate DLC. We got one farming Jimmy Jenkins. One is double penetrating, which is crazy. The other one's not as good, but... Still. Sanctuary's a solid 10, 15 FPS. I was gonna say, if it's a like, steady 30 FPS and the field of view is 65, 70, like, that's a really good port. Especially to a handheld. I'd imagine it to be more like 12. You know, old school games don't even hit 30. Go back and you play games and, like, you're in 64 or whatever. Those games are not 30 frames per second. Goldeneye in the N64. And people love that game, it's such a classic, and it was ahead of its time, but it's not aged well. It's really not aged well. I, I get it as a piece of gaming history, but I don't get it as a piece of nostalgia that you would actually like... You know, the Pimpernickel is not shooting. You would actually want to actively go and, and play. That guy was dead, dude. Machine... Color pencil, the machine gun color pencil. Like it being really narrow, like all the other guns on there. I mean, those games are really driven by aim assist, too. Which was ahead of its time, actually. Like, other games weren't doing that. But then you go back and you play those games and you realize they're basically an on-the-rail shooter. Once they got aim assist down for console, they became effectively quick-time events for a while. And then it takes games like Halo, which really was Combat Evolved, to find that right mix of, like, it's a little bit of aim assist, but you're mostly in control, and so there's a skill to it. So that you got a genuine FPS experience on console. Hence why, like, people with controllers can play on PC these days and really hold their own. There's been people win Fortnite tournaments using controllers. But you get used to the con The main thing about your peripherals and why I've always been okay with the Zim, people using the Zim, including myself, I've used the- I use the Zim plenty. Um, and it doesn't pay to lie about that. Is that it's just about using whatever controller you're comfortable with. You can get your ass kicked by anybody. I know the debate is always around the advantage over mouse and keyboard. Well, the biggest advantage is on whatever peripheral you practice with. That's what you're going to get good at. Is there a higher skill cap for mouse and keyboard? Definitely. You can probably, I would say, get much better and more precise with a mouse over a long period of time if that's your chosen peripheral. But it's really whatever you shoot. This is a fucking terrible song. It's just been a guy talking. What was with that? People are like, oh, a Zim, it'll make you instantly win the game. No, it doesn't even come close to making you instantly win the game. There's so many hoops you have to jump through to even get it to work properly to begin with, let alone finding the right peripherals, half of which they don't even make anymore, and then there's the matter of getting it to feel right, and then you have to train yourself on it. And that's a whole other ball game. You're better off not buying one if you're thinking you're going to get an unfair advantage, because you're going to be sorely disappointed. So much of it is about practice, practice, practice on whatever you like to play with. The great Will So. Thanks for being here, Will So. Uh, were you a fan of the old Turok games on the N64? I kind of have to be. My name is Turok. Yeah, the old Turok games are really good. Turok 2 Seeds of Evil is famous, man. The freaking boar driller thing. But of course they fell apart, which is too bad. But my name's Turok, Adam. I gotta play those games. I have to. It's it's like an unwritten law of my life. It looked like that. It looked like a color pencil. Oh. Guys, talking is the best song. Yeah, that song sucked. Thanks for being here, Will. So I appreciate it. Okay. Remember they tried rebooting Turok and the game was just butts in my opinion? It wasn't too good. I made a review for that actually. I'm gonna re-upload it to my new YouTube. But I made a review for that back in high school. It's got some skits and shit. I was okay with it. I really was okay with it. It was nice that Turok tried to make a comeback. Somebody owns the rights now. My brother just recently bought me the most up-to-date Turok game and it's called uh... And it ties more into the comic books than the video games did. Which is what I was named after. My dad was old. My dad read the comic books. He didn't know anything about the games. 
And it's called Turok Escape from Scar Valley. So someone owns the rights. I think it's Warner Brothers or something now. There's still totally the possibility those games get a proper re-release. A proper reboot. It needed rebooted because the game started falling apart. Like, the one that I played on the, on the Xbox, it was like Turok 17 at that point. Because they started releasing way too many of them. I've got a weird history with that game because, uh... Look at me, look, I'm the right order now, yeah. When they released the one that was really bad for the Xbox and was like, just really convoluted and strange. Some people love that game, but I just remember the story being fucking weird. And I did beat it, I played the hell out of it. But they had this thing going on. Cause the claim, one of the reasons the claim went broke is because they were like one of those old school gaming companies that would do really dumb marketing things like give somebody fifty thousand dollars or this is like legit they painted uh the wings of pigeons with the latest game advert and they had like if you like put your baby into like a refrigerator and a gas station for 15 minutes they'd give you ten thousand dollars like crazy cringy edgy clickbaity shit to sell stuff but uh they had this thing going on with Turok that if you named your kid Turok, they'd give you $10,000. So, of course, my family jumped on it because I was... That's my God-given birth name. So, yeah, all right, give us the $10,000. Like, you didn't have to challenge us. We just naturally had named our son that, is what they were saying. Well, it was really, really stupid because they never even fulfilled the contract. They went really quiet. They never answered our emails. And they added this stipulation. This is all true. They added this stipulation that your kid had to be born on the release date of the game. So you couldn't have, like, just named your kid Turok, and your kid can't have been named Turok up to that point. You had to have a kid be born exactly on the date the game came out, and then name them Turok. So it was dumb, but it was just because they were going broke. A claim was... A claim had reached some dizzying heights back in the day, and they were the shadow of their former selves. 360 was an odd duck. It was an odd duck. Like I said, I made a review for it. I'll, I could even upload it tonight. I could do a re-upload on that. I made a review for bathroom review on that. Um, talked about it. It died quick. It died quick. Um, but it was interesting. It had really cool dinosaur AI. It had a lot of stealth components. But it was also really like they should have never bought the Turok rights and just made a new IP because... The way that they went about it is, like, Turok is like the, the more, the more modern spin on the Turok comic books is that he is like, um, Black Panther. Like, you call him the Black Panther, but that's not actually how he was born. The Indian tribe that he comes from, the Native American tribe that he comes from, there's only like one Turok at any one time. But it didn't used to be that way. In the old school, the Son of Stone comics that I've got, I've got issue number one for that and I've got the 90s reboot of that. Issue number one, which didn't go anywhere, by the way. The 90s reboot of the of the comic strip, of the comic book, sorry. Is the old one was legit, he was just Turok. That was the name of the warrior. He was a brave, and he lived in this valley where they called the dinosaurs honkers, and he led the tribe, <clears throat> and he was a warrior, and he could actually kill the dinosaurs. And, of course, evil corporations later come in, like, t in the 90s reboot, evil corporations come in and take the dinosaurs over, kind of like the Enclave with Death Claws. They put, like, little devices on their heads and try to use them as soldiers. It gets really weird. Dizzy Nights, terrifying lows, creamy middles. Yo, Lieutenant Big Wong, way down south we get the Jeremiah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah. So Jeremiah, I was watching the IGN stream of Cyberpunk before they released the gameplay footage, and I got to catch up pretty good, but then I had to go right before they actually went live with the, uh, the new footage, so how was it? Yo, Vagna Gun! What do you think about Borderlands guy in Fortnite? It's pretty sweet. I think it's pretty sweet. They did a really good job with it, Vagna Gun. They did a really good job with it, Tyrell. It looks a lot like Pandora. You know, they're close. Tim Sweeney and Randy, I don't know, they're close, close. But they talk. Clearly, they're doing business dealings together. You know, it's, uh... <clears throat> they published Fortnite, the physical copy, when it was just in beta. You know, they took a risk with them <clears throat> before Epic Star would rise. Speaking of dizzying heights, 
the what has happened in Epic in the last two years, Epic was already huge because they made the Unreal Engine. It's not like they weren't already fucking wildly successful. But, you know, they weren't the biggest comp gaming company in the world, and now you could definitely argue that they're one of the biggest gaming companies in the world. They're right up there with Activision Blizzard, they're right up there with EA, for sure. That happened in a two-year time period. But before that all happened, Gearbox decided they would publish Fortnite for him, and then Gearbox signed those exclusivity rights for the Epic Game Store, and clearly they're working together. Clearly they're working together. I'm not against it. I thought they did a good job on it. Hey, it's money. I want to see Borderlands succeed. I've talked about it plenty of times. Call me a shill. My dream job was to work at Gearbox when I went to school for video games, and... So, you know, I'm a fan. Yo, Enormous Grape! Enormous Grape, thank you for taking the red pill, seeing just how deep the rabbit hole goes. Welcome to reality. Enormous Grape, thanks a lot for that follow. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, it wasn't even a thing until Save the World kind of sucked after like 10 years. Right. Yep. But, in the wake of Save the World's eh, middling, I mean, it wasn't a failure. And I'm sure it's not been a failure as time's continued, but... In the wake of it being middling and the reviews kind of suck, and I made a big doc on that on my YouTube. Like, the whole history of that thing. Um, I mean, it was an experiment. Because they had always had multiplayer. If you talk to the guys who did the beta and the alpha testing for Fortnite on PC, they had experimented with a lot of different multiplayer up to that point. They had done this one mode that sounded really cool that I was hoping they would actually re-implement. Where it was like Save the World, you had classes, and two, both teams had a construction area, and they would build their fort up, and then you would go and kill one another, and the goal was to defeat the other team's atlas. It's a little bit similar to what they've done in the like, tomato versus hamburger mode. Like, one team is at the, you know, the tomato head guy, whatever they call him. The other team's in the hamburger shop. They've got names for all this shit. But... It was a lot like that, except you actually had the classes. You had the soldier, you had the ninja, you had the constructor. And the constructor would stay back at the base and keep, like, upgrading it, building it up, and putting turrets in. And then the ninjas and the soldiers would go out there and actively attack it. And they liked it. They, that uh, one guy we watched a little bit, Blitz Fury, I don't even think he streams anymore. Him and his little crew that were, like, super big in the alpha, they talked about it. Thanks for that red pill hype, Will Sell. I appreciate you away. Thanks, man. That's nice of you. Save the world should have a mode where you just have one giant permanent map. Oh, definitely. Justin and I talked about that a lot. That was like our biggest thing. That's what I saw in my head too, is I thought it would be much more like Seven Days to Die. I thought it would be like Seven Days to Die combined with Gears of War Horde mode. And it's... It's that instance-based thing that just ruins it for me personally. But it was there. It's, it's forced there because it's so much of it is like a mobile game in that way. You know, it's like the quest and Fallout Shelter. It's very specific, small moments of gameplay that are broken apart by progress bars and lots of little XPs to fill. Not just one single bar, but dozens of bars that you can sort of fill, you sort of can't. You're, you're time-gated on almost everything, and usually everything tells you if you want to continue to make good progress, you need to buy loot box, especially when that shit first started. You know, you had the research bar, you only would... They would say it was bonus XP. For your daily bonus, but just like World of Warcraft was doing at the time, once you had played enough in a day, you know, you basically, the game was telling you to get off. And they were doing that for health reasons, but it's still bullshit, people can make their own decision. I've... Sometimes argued in defense of, uh... Blizzard saying you think you do, but you don't. Because I think that is sometimes the case in games. But clearly the success of World of Warcraft Classic tells you otherwise. So that whole thing's changing again, thankfully. Developers are... It's kind of like banning pop, you know? Like, you don't ban pop. You don't ban cigarettes. If people want to do that shit, they can do that shit. That's their choice. Let them make that choice. Trying to dictate people's behavior is only going to get in the way of your game. You know, people can manage their own lives. That's up to them. If they end up fucking... Gaining 50 pounds and throwing their life away to WoW, that's not WoW's fault. That's their fault. And then the developers shouldn't program their game with that in mind. That, well, we really got to stop people gaining 50 pounds and losing their jobs. I waste a lot of money on Fortnite. I regret it's a waste of money. On the Save the World Grape or on the BR? 
Game I love was the original Prey on 360. Adam, I agree. My brother and I just had a really nice long chat about that game. It was it was really good. I want to play the new Prey. We're going to get around to it. We're going to get around to it. Whether it's on Game Pass or not, we will get around to it. Put the money in the bag. Are you still here, Tyrell? What an IPR. How are you even here? It's Monday. Oh, you're off on, you're off on Mondays now, right? You could build a huge base, explore nearby cities for loot and quests, like a Minecraft quest map. Basically do Minecraft mode. Seven Days to Die is very similar to that. But Seven Days to Die is also darker, grittier, and... <clears throat> you know, it's more complex. I was kind of hoping for a Borderlands style, you know, more like that action RPG, that light thing with lots of loot and drops. Like they made it look like when Gearbox made that trailer for him. I imagine Gearbox did because it was in the Gearbox style. It showed all these weapons on the ground. And it made it seem like they were going to drop, and it would, you know, play more like an open world game. More like a Borderlands game. Which it wasn't. It was all around cards, much like NBA 2K. Or Madden. Get the right card with the right rules. Now, all this has changed, by the way. It's not t fundamentally different, but it's, it's so much more generous. And the system has been reworked to where you can, you know, re-roll the cards just through grinding and... They show you what's in the loot box before you get it. Loot boxes are free half the time. They're only 50 V-Bucks, which is great. I always argued for that. 50 V-Bucks should be the price of a fucking loot box. 50 cents, man. 50 cents is... That's fine. You can go buy those little pills at, you know, a Chinese restaurant or Walmart or a gas station or whatever. Get a lollipop or get a sticky hand for 50 cents. 25 cents even sometimes. And that's physical. At least you own the little sticky hand. The kid gets to pop open the pill. Whereas these loot boxes are digital. You don't ever really own them. You can't physically do anything with them. It's why the $180 Bloodhound Axe was so insulting. Now, they've changed it. Thank God there's a new mode coming in. new event coming into Apex. And it's only going to be like $5 skins. So they definitely changed their minds and did decide to rework it but it's still gonna be 20 bucks for the race skin but that's okay fortnite does that shit too that's really up to you you know because it is free to play yeah finishing my schoolwork watching you well thanks for being here tyrell i appreciate it man have you got all your pre-orders in tyrell and jeremiah i was gonna ask you one what you thought of the footage you may have already answered me and two no you didn't um what addition to borderlands 3 you got on the battle royale do you still play the Battle Royale? Um, great. Oh, Fortnite's like throwing a hundred dollars away. It's a trap? Kind of. Weird. People shit on this DLC, but I still think it's really cool. I mean, they added- it's a really nice map. It's got good colors. It's got good depth to it. Scale is nice, but it's still easy to run through. And they introduced a bunch of new enemies, and they weren't all just reskins either. People really, really gave this DLC a lot of shit. We get Borderlands 3 and Monster Hunter Iceborne this month, but I'm broke as fuck. Did you pre order either of them? Yo, Zet Fate, tell us. It's been like a little while since I've seen you, man. It's easier. What, Fortnite is? Yeah, Fortnite tell easier. But it's also better, in my opinion. But Gumby disagrees, but. Gumby played in a time when it was super hardcore to do anything. It was it. Fate, tell us. You didn't have the research points. You didn't have the gear. And you really had to, like, fucking figure out every possible way to break it. I would just get super, super fucking annoyed at playing 9 or 10 hours in a stream. Because I played plenty. I've got, like, two weeks in that game still. And feeling like I didn't do anything. I made no progress. Whereas in this game, I paid, you know, 60 bucks for it. Twice over now, to be fair, but still. It's like, oh, I did a quest. I moved forward. I did a quest. I moved forward. It was... It'd become that, like, get the parts. Okay, how do you get the parts? Do 15 repair the van missions. Ah, oh, all right. Why are you doing the repair the mi repair the van missions? Get a bunch of gnomes, and only three gnomes will spawn per mission. And then it's like, oh, there's no repair the van missions available on the world map. So what do we do next? I guess we could do dailies or farm something, but our daily XP rewards are down. And there's no items on the map that we actually really need right now for building. And I'm completely out of materials. So all we would be doing is hurting ourselves. So we better log off and try tomorrow, just like a mobile game. And when you spend over $200 on a mobile game, that shit's liable to fucking, you know, pucker your asshole and piss you off a little bit. 
It certainly did me. Zed's a YouTuber and a streamer. He plays a lot of Magic the Gathering. He's really good at Monster Hunter. He's also really good at Magic, so check him out. Sabine or Zed. Like throwing a hundred dollars away. It feels that way. I play more Minecraft than Fortnite. Fortnite's made a great comeback. Whoops, I just threw away a bunch of Iridium. Didn't mean to do that. We got some really, really weird shit going on with elemental stuff in Borderlands 3. It, I guess I shouldn't say it's like hyper weird, but it's it doesn't feel balanced from what I'm seeing on the initial take. Like I have no idea why you would ever use corrosive. Corrosive is only good against armor and has a damage reduction across the board, whereas cryo has the same amount of damage on armor. Basically, it's like five percent different, and doesn't have all these weaknesses. Though it does work different. And they take they took away explosive damage, which is weird. It's weird. Uh I didn't pre-order. I'll probably get them for my birthday in October or something. When I'm not working on school stuff, I've been playing Maple Story. I've been playing Apex a bit more as well. Didn't touch my PS4 for like three months. You just been busy with school Zed or work. Are you working at that hookah bar like you were talking about? But what I just described to you is my immense frustration with uh Fortnite. And I and I really wanted, knowing, going in, that it was going to be kind of one of these live service games like Destiny. That's why I put so much money into it. Having had plenty of experience with mobile games, but lots of money into it. Hoping that that would basically future-proof me for all intensive purposes. Like, I've put a lot of money in, and now I should just be able to play this game like it's any other triple game. If that isn't triple A game, if that doesn't say I didn't believe in it, because I was watching the trailers way, way, way back. That's why I made that documentary on it. I remember it being revealed by Cliffy B at the Video Game Awards, and so much would happen over the course of that game before it even got into our hands. And so much happened to it after it got launched. I mean, it was completely unpredictable what was going to happen next. But I could not at all justify spending money on loot boxes just on principle too i mean fuck them man honestly because i can't believe they brought that shit to triple a games like that that hard especially since we had to pay for that game i know everybody who's ever played warframe tells me it's not even remotely like that and it's free to play i can understand in free to play games the mon those monetization methods if they're if they're scummy they'll die on their own faults but when you ask people for a lot of money to beta test your game and then fill it full of that stuff that's just insulting but they've made many 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 amends seems like gumby and even repo man who's got like 55 days play like 10,000 missions done that guy goes hard on fortnite and has still occasionally does they're just done with it. I think they're just burned out. Gumby used to argue that the Fortnite, there was two separate teams and they were, you know, doing their thing and it was all going to be good. Now he doesn't even argue that anymore. Seems to think that they've pretty much moved on. How many guns do you have? Bajillions. Oh, should be running Auspicious Raider. I don't know. I got these. I'm ready for level 50, I can tell you that much. Though I do need to go get my mod. Yeah, the hookah bar gig fell through. Uh, the Apex Battle Pass was $20. That's expensive. It was 10 I think. So it's only uh, 1070 if you buy the basic one. And then, like, you do it like I do it. If you can save the money, that buys every pass from there on out. That's what I've been doing. No grog. Um, no, I haven't farmed. I've just been doing my thing. I'm not playing any made of shit or anything like that. Not yet, anyway. Grog smash! I'm only level 47. I'm gonna wait till I'm level 50 or higher to get that shit. Not only that, I haven't done bunkers and badasses. I'll just do a ruby, Zed. 
I took a summer class, started getting back into MapleStory on a private server. Started the fall semester like two weeks ago. Did you end up passing your chemistry? I know like you didn't, then you took a summer class. So what's going on in that? Train dumbass. Hey brother, how's you? I'm better than good. I'm better than most. How are you, dumbass? Grog smash! How does the character store guns up his ass? Dude, it's nowhere near as bad as Moral Winds. Great. I remember having like 50,000 pounds of shit because Moral, Moral Wind 10 years ago ran better. Now it's been like 20 years since that game came out. Maybe longer. Ran fucking better than Fallout 76. And you can have 50,000 pounds of shit in your back. Just pull it right out of some orifice. So I didn't do well in the spring, so I was dismissed from that community college. Started another one that is actually closer to me, but it's still out of district. I didn't know you were full-on dismissed. I thought you just didn't pass that chemistry. So did you pass your summer classes then, Zed? Those go well? Alright, we need to actually focus back in on main story. Get that done, then we'll do all the quests. Probably need to go up this ridge, yeah. I have Fallout 4. That's cool. I really liked Fallout 4, personally. It's not the uh, favorite Fallout. Many people argue New Vegas is fucking great. Maybe it is. I haven't played enough of it. It does seem pretty damn buggy, though. I feel like there's some nostalgia there. But it does seem to tell really good stories. So that's cool. It's uh, It's been good enough from what little I've experienced in New Vegas. That I'm going to try to pick up the Outer Worlds. You know, if you straight up... But the, the bullets, you know, if you aim straight up with the uncapped arrow, the bullets go everywhere. It's got a spread, right? It's a natural spread. Good. I'm glad you're good, dumbass. It's Dumas. Uh, intro. I did really well in my summer class. Taking three classes for the fall, and I'm super excited about that. Intro to weather and climate, plant society, environmental geology. Get my should get associates in the spring. Good. Nice. Glad to hear it, man. So, did you get that chemistry class then done over the summer, or? Yeah, dude, next week we get BL3. It's gonna be sick. I'd almost forgotten about all the Twitch stuff we get too. The Twitch extension and the fact that you guys can freaking put bosses in here when you want to and design them yourself. Guardian rank being a whole other system of progress. The Proving Grounds, Mayhem Mode. Oh man, oh man, farming. New Game Plus, it's just gonna be crazy. It's just gonna be crazy. I think it's gonna be so good. Looks like they've really followed their... All the data. All the player feedback. They always have, though. They have since the Nox DLC. Done fan service and, and looked at how pl people play their game and listened to feedback and responded. And instead of like Bungie does fucking forcing people to run the treadmill the way they want people to run the treadmill. Instead... As the Chinese would say, they pet the donkey the way its hair grows. Oh, the players are playing this way. Alright, let's design around that. Let's design into that. Let's make that even better. So good. Fallout New Vegas has the worst graphics ever. Fallout was good and Fallout 76 was so unsuccessful. Still around. It's got a crazy cult following Enormous Grape. I don't think it's going anywhere. Fallout New Vegas, like I said, I haven't played enough of it. I know that Wills is a huge fan of all the achievements. I think it tells really, really good old school RPG stories. It, great plots, nice twists. Um, sometimes I just think that the nostalgia, not out of you, Wilso, but just on forum boards and like Reddit and shit, gets a little fucking out of touch. I start to get the feeling these people haven't actually like loaded the game up in a while and they're. They talk about it like it was a revolution, the greatest game that was ever created, and probably the best Fallout that's ever been, and I just, uh... I think that's probably a little extreme. But I love Fallout 3, and it just seems like a better version of Fallout 3. But I'm definitely gonna go back to that at some point. It'll probably be next year now. We were almost done with ours, but then a hard drive went bad, and so now we gotta go back. And we will do that. We will do that. That is not cancelled. 
I'm leaving. See you tomorrow. All right, man. See ya. It spreads weird. I mean, yeah, you're right. It does spread weird. Yo, Enormous Grape, you have a good day. You have a great day. You have a fantastic day. You have a fabulous day. You have a superior day. You have a wonderful day. You have a great day. You have a good day. See ya, Grape. People have roast tinted glasses about New Vegas. You think it was unanimously hailed as the greatest of all time when it came out. Right. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That's a great point. That's a great point. I'm not against people loving it, and I can see that there's a lot of good in it. It's just like, especially in the context of how people shit on Fallout 76, like there's some things that Fallout 76 that does that are just better than New Vegas. I mean, just the first person mechanics alone are, are so much better now because they have that company that went and did it for Fallout 4. Oh shit, can we get some Nexus Cat hype up in the chat from Maltroff? He's a new more human than a human. Give him some love. Make him feel welcome. At least give him three emotes. There we go. Thank you, Wilson, for the muscle cat hype. Yo, Maltroff, you continue to fight the war, and you've... Well, no, no, no. You've joined the war. You've joined the war, Maltroff. And you've joined the resistance, and you've become... More human than a human. One of us. One of us. His name was Robert Paulson. His name was Robert Paulson. Maltroff, thank you very much for that follow, dude. Thankful and I'm grateful. Super nice of you. Tyrell, thank you for that Nexus cat hype. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. Do you have BL3 pre-ordered? Tyrell? I love the pink. <laughs> thank you, Matroff. I went and visited um, UW University of Wisconsin Madison too. If you took it, I'd love to go there, but out of state tuition, there is robbery. I need to live for a year before I can be a resident. So you plan on continuing to go? How old are you? Zed, so once you get your associates, you're gonna go on and try to get your bachelor's, that's your goal? No, I think I'm gonna check out this game called Greedfall. Zed at 16. Well, fuck, he's way ahead of the curve then. Greedfall, that's interesting, Maltroff. Tell me about that. Thanks again for that sub. That was super nice of you. Thank you. Thanks for making him feel welcome, stream. Well, so and Tyrell. I'm 24 in October. So you want to get your bachelor's. Nope, I think I'm going to have to wait two days after it comes out. That's when I get paid. All right, sweet. You're still planning on getting it, though. What's this about this horror game we were going to play through together? Just Bioware-like RPG. Is it by Obsidian? Outer Worlds is looking all right. As I say, I think I'm probably... I'm going to try to check it out right along Cyberpunk. Though I think Outer Worlds is out pretty soon. Shit. Oh, it's not a death, though. Um, they did Technomancer. Okay, Technomancer. That was the one where you're, like, on Mars, right? Heard okay things about that. There's a chance in the spring I'll move across the border with my parents and work for a year so I can get state tuition. But I gotta look at all my options because I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. Like, move to Wisconsin? You're from Illinois, right? You gotta wait for the Steam release of Borderlands 3. So, are you one of those people that was pissed that it's on the Epic Launcher? I gotta see if there's anything that'll work better for me. I mean, just do what you were saying. Go work for a year in Wisconsin and then go to college there. Seems like you've already got your heart set on a plan that would work. <laughs> Become a cheesemonger. Kosh. 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 What? Oh, so Wednesday, as I say, I'm going to set kind of a hard cutoff date to this. Um, so that we. And then Thursday, I would want to stream the tales in one day. I'll give myself one day. Hopefully, start early enough that we can do it in one sitting. Because it looks like we literally just have to beat it for all the achievements. And I need to beat it anyways to see the story We're going into three. And that would give us a week. Yes, I'm still overly idealistic and optimistic, but hey, it'd give us a week to do the pre-sequel shit. If I don't get all the achievements on this by Wednesday, I'll do them off stream, so we need to make sure this playthrough for the sake of YouTube is at a place where it still feels pretty complete.
Uh, really want to go get my bachelor's, but the biggest thing for me is needing health insurance when I'm 26. Because in the state tuition, where it's super reasonable, like 10k a year, but out of state, for me is needing health insurance when you're 26. What do you mean? 38k a year. <clears throat> like I said, you had that that plan, right? You were gonna go work for a year in Wisconsin. I mean, you have your associates. You probably hook up a job, no problem. Maybe a little bit of hunting, but still. Uh, you were disappointed. How do you feel if I said you just have to download a launcher? Because, as we talk about on here, well, so mentions often, we're still waiting for our Jade Rabbit on Xbox. <laughs> no brothels in Wisconsin. Because I have heart condition, I need insurance, otherwise I'll go bankrupt. Like, you have to take medicine? Pretty sure you get your health insurance until 27 under Obamacare. Still be under your parents. I was on my mom's insurance up until last year. Up until I turned 28, I was still on my mom's health insurance. She had because she was an x-ray technician. No parents, virgin birth. Now, this map is pretty big. Pretty sure we're supposed to be using a hover boat for all this too. I take meds, do a yearly checkup, surgery every five years or so. Holy shit, what's your heart condition? You should look into that though. I'm pretty sure you're covered for one more year. I have games on other launchers, just never play them. Okay, so you weren't really pissed about this, the epic launcher, you just don't want to bother with it. Replace the battery. It's intense. Wasn't aware you had a pacemaker, man. Holy crap. Didn't you be, like, covered under... Were you born with that? Isn't there a government program called CHIPS that covers... helps cover people that are born with medical conditions? It might only be for, like, the most intense, but I don't know. I don't know if it expires when you grow up either, but... Right, like, I never got into Witcher, because I got it on GMG. Green Man Gaming, is that what that is? Now, when I was 13, you know, first happened, I went, Oh, that's right, that's right, you were at Boy Scouts, right? You were at Boy Scouts and all that crazy shit happened. I see where you're coming from, Maltroff. I mean, they'll have sales by then and everything, so... I don't blame you for old enough. Or actually, it was a good old... Good old games launcher. Is that what they used to call it? I'm a big fan of Borderlands and Gearbox, though, so I'm definitely... I mean, I bought it twice. I bought it once for my nephew and bought it once for myself. Super Deluxe. Even though the fucking 2K, I feel like, keeps... Gouging us console people. Like, having to buy the remastered $15 for the Lilith DLC if you didn't do it during the free event thing is just... A little outrageous. I think it is outrageous, actually. $15 for a game that's almost 10 years old, or $15 DLC for a game that's almost 10 years old is way too much. Meaning, by the way, Wednesday is Lilith DLC regardless. We at least got to play through that and see what's up and listen to the story. Uh, you don't want to play on PC? Someday I'll play on PC. Since I stream, uh, my PC is just like a CPU rig, man. It's... I let my Xbox handle the gaming portion of the computing, and then I let my computer handle the encoding for the stream. I like Xbox, I dig Xbox, eventually I'll move over to PC gaming, especially for a game like Borderlands, it'd be a good game to transition to, but I ain't got that kind of money. Not right now. Uh, eventually, you know, we'll get there. The stream will get there and we'll do that thing. Um, my goal is to upgrade my audio one more time and then start working on upgrading the PC so we can do that. So eventually. But that's a long-term plan, so... We will get there in the end. Audio. Yeah, I'll upgrade my microphone, upgrade my preamp, upgrade my compressor, get some new gizmos so that we can do more memes, like zooming in on the camera easier, like, you know, doing this thing is just a couple button presses away. <laughs> um, my sound, little clips, you know, what just happened to us? Oh, it's a meme. Oh. I look at this more from the stance as a broadcaster <clears throat> and a broadcasting booth, and that's how I look at it, and so that's my goals. Yes. 
Be yeah, I'm trying to focus on my associates now because I just started a new chapter in my life soon and figure out what the fuck I'm gonna do. Yeah, well, I'm sure you will figure it out, man. You keep moving forward, you keep progressing, your life keeps you know, keeping that upward mobility, you keep setting goals, it's all gonna work out for you, is that I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. Which one would you rather have? Monster Hunter Iceborne or Borderlands 3, Zed? So this is like a mix of like Borderlands 3, Heart of Darkness, Light, and actually a big game Hunter DLC because there's a bunch of big ass monsters you go kill, which is Hammerlock's thing. Hammerlock's is also, he's an heir. He's the brother of the Jacob CEO. And then of course, Aurelia from the pre-sequel is the sister. And so that all ties in. I was actually playing pre-sequel with my nephew last night because he hung out, stayed the night, and uh, was playing Aurelia. She says some really interesting stuff that's all going to tie in. I hope they don't kill Aurelia off. Oh, fuck it. She's a really fun character. She's super evil. Uh, I think I'd rather have Monster Hunter first. Yeah, dude, you should do that then. It's just an expansion, right? Is it gonna be like 20 bucks? You should totally do that. I know you've been prepping for it. You've been going hard and like... Waiting for over a year, it seems like. Getting ready for Iceborne. exploring we got to get that exploration achievement anyways so this is such a big map you can actually do some exploring of course the vehicle gets nicely cut off and immersion is ruined every five minutes but still <clears throat> are you into the new gears i'm gonna do my best to get into the new gears yes um we'll have three days before borderlands 3 depending on where we're at when that occurs i'll make a decision then if it's just not realistic to get into it right then, then I'll get into it probably a year later. But I love Gears. I've played all the Gears. I've beat them all. I've played them plenty. It's one of my favorite franchises. So yeah, definitely. I'd like to totally do a story run at the very least. I beat the last one on Insane like I've beat all the others, and I thought the story was really good. I thought the reboot was great. It's not a reboot, but it kind of was, you know? It's finally Microsoft embracing it again and under the coalition like they did with Halo and 343 and they made a really good Gears of War they made a really good Gears of War I thought the story was cool um even though it's a little hokey you know the swarm instead of locust and all this shit it ended in a really interesting place kind of like Corrigan from from uh Starcraft not to spoil it but there's your hint so I want to see where it's going how about you Mal are you into Gears dude Friday Gears hype is this Friday Gears of War It'd be next Friday, right? No, 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 no. That doesn't make any sense. Tuesday. Tuesday, Gears of War. Friday, Gears of Do you get it earlier, Cheese? If you have the Ultimate Edition, do you get it earlier? Cheese, spell it! Yep. Oh, shit. All right. Well, damn. I guess we'd have more time then, wouldn't we? All right, so this Friday, Gears of War 5 is playable. That'll be cool. I love the first game I played through, too, but I fell off after that. Well, I thought I played the hell out of Gears of War 3. My buddy, uh, <clears throat> his name was Seth. We got to top 50 in Wingman on the leaderboard on the 360. We fucking went hard on that game. I loved Gears of War 3. I know a lot of people love 2. 2 is fantastic. Played it a lot, too. They're all good. Gears of War was way ahead of its time. It is the still, to this day, in my opinion, the best third-person action game out there. As far as shooting and... And the flow of combat and the responsiveness of the controls. It feels like an FPS, but it's a third-person game. And other games don't do that. The best parts of Fortnite are because they have that Gears of War thing that Epic had. Except, you know, it's more bloom-oriented and all that building shit that they do. But to me, the best parts of Fortnite were always that you could... In a shotgun battle, I could feel Gears of War in there. Thermitage. Big-ass scorpion. just gonna do your hunting thing? <laughs> I'm curious as to why I can order these savages around. <laughs> deal with you in good time, sir. I promised my companion a pleasurable weekend of hunting. And I'm giving a shit about him. Come on. You guys fight me already? <sighs> Bolt Hunter, it appears we shan't get a moment's peace as long as this Nakiyama fellow keeps hassling us to go fight him. <laughs> I've heard some bizarre radio chatter coming from the other side of Silly's Grove. I'm afraid you'll have to head there, stop whatever horrible plans Nakayama has conceived, and save the world. Okay. 
So he, he idolizes Handsome Jack. Nobody gives a shit about him, though. Game Pass Ultimate get a four days early. Nice. All right, sweet. Well, I guess we'll have to see just how well we can push over these next few days. I mean, I'm going to stream till like, 1, but tomorrow we, get a, we start on time. We'll see where we get to. So, I, 3 was... 3 to me was the one. The fucking Gears, though. In that it suddenly played really, really fluid. You could jump over cover, you could hit people over the top of the head and stab them. The chainsaw battles were fluid, the shooting was fluid. Like, Gears of War 1 especially, and Gears of War 2 are still kind of stiff. You know, and it's either like you're in cover or you're shooting. And you're either running or you're not. Where in Gears of War 3 suddenly it had that running gun feel to it. And it had so many components to the multiplayer. That was another one of those games that just launched, like, right at the right time for me. I was still in high school. I had free time. <clears throat> when I wasn't doing my sports or, like, Thanksgiving break. I remember Thanksgiving break just going hard on Gears every year and playing that turkey boomer mode where they would give you the boom shot and it would shoot turkeys out. And just, like, hanging out in a room for eating tons of turkey and mashed potatoes and stuffing and playing Gears all day. I still play. We just streamed it, like, three weeks ago. Yeah, I'm definitely a fan, and I hope we get to check it out. My brother was a super fan. He loved that franchise. He's got, he bought, when Gears of War 3 came out, he bought the statue edition. My brother saves his money. So that tells you how much he loved that franchise. He read all the novels, he started to hate them. Because they started having this woman, like Karen Scott, write them, and she got like super SJW. And forced this character called Bernie into it. Bernie was fucking annoying. Bernie was one of those, like, lost people. The people that still, like, live on the surface, but they're not at all related to the cogs. And, like, you know, are, like, the last pieces of the wars, the pendulum wars that are still out there, the outsiders or whatever. He bought the Adam Phoenix edition. Nice. So you are also a huge fan. She is nice, man. Respect. Well, like, Bernie somehow became the lead character. No more Dom, no more Marcus, no more any of these characters that you like came to know and love they just started following bernie around and bernie was an outsider and bernie was like gang raped that's legit part of the story she was gang raped by a bunch of cog soldiers and she like gets ham fisted into like i do not mean a pun there so please don't take that that fucking way we'll see on mixer but uh she gets fucking brought into Gears of War 3 out of nowhere. Like, and if you hadn't read the books, you really wouldn't know who the hell she was. But my brother hated that Bernie was in Gears of War 3. He thought it was an annoying character. She somehow saves the world. She's like an 80-year-old woman at this point. She somehow becomes more powerful than Marcus, which is... Just like a rule of thumb in storytelling that you should let your protagonist finish the fight. If you ha you've had a hero that you follow for most of your book or most of your story, they need to be there at the end. <clears throat> and it's really weird in Gears of War that suddenly Bernie becomes, like, one of the primary protagonists, saves the world and shit. It's dumb. That lol was a bad sign. We'll see you on Mixer. Well, it looked cool. I wish it would have gone somewhere. I was trying to make that look like... Uh, may buy it. Game looks pretty. Hey, man, that's up to you. I'm not gonna try to sell that shit on you anymore, Steven. I've tried to sell you on it. I'm done trying to sell you on it. That's up to you. I'm glad you're liking Borderlands 2, though. You already had come in here, Steven, and told me you were excited to play it together, and then gave me the I'm not hyped for it thing. I feel like you were trying to troll me. Yo, what's the dream? What up, Steven? How the hell are you? Are you on the road tonight? Or are you home? You probably just left, right? Just recently left? Thanks for being here, Steven. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. I love flexing my Adam Phoenix skin on my uh, animated flame skin. I remember Gears of War 2 cheese that if you pre-ordered, you got those gold skins back in the day when, you know, you could sell horse armor. I'm home leaving early in the AM. Oh, nice. Why is your schedule different today, Steven? Back when you could sell horse armor for $5 and people thought that was ludicrous, how much things have changed. So, like, those pre-ordered gold skins. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, those ended up going on sale for $100, and people would fucking buy them. Horse arm was $10. Okay, excuse me. The $10 horse armor, people thought that was ludicrous. How much has changed? Also, your face came as huge. Oh, shit. Thanks for telling me. <laughs> I'm sitting here fucking scratching my nose, working on, you know, you can't pick your nose because you got a bug because you're live. Thank you, Will So. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Is it till 9 a.m.? It's just over at Pittsburgh. Cool. <clears throat> All right, so the man who was excited to play the game with Borderlands 3 with us, who then said he's not hyped about it and probably not going to get it, is now thinking about getting Borderlands 3. I tried to convince you on the Super Deluxe. Are you going to get the regular edition since you don't want to throw that money down for the DLC? Yeah, but they sold those gold skins for $99. And people bought them. People fucking bought them. And I want to know how those people feel today. That's what I want to know. Do you feel good about that decision? Like, I would I would do it again, too. Easy $100 for that gold skin for that game that nobody really plays anymore. Or is that one where you, you regret it? You know, you think, eh, I could have an extra $100 right now if I didn't just absolutely feel like I had to have the gold skins on my guns. <clears throat> you grab your VIP skins for Borderlands 3. Dude, I have gone hard on VIP. I've got 70,000 points on that VIP. I'll tell you that that system is a little glitchy. I got my nephew the golden, the legendary, working as intended here. Huh. See, there's a void dimension. This right here is Steven and his memory. All right, this is Steven's memory. Now, you said you were excited to play with me, man. Pepperidge Farm remembers, Steven. Pepperidge Farm remembers. Then you played the tough guy. Oh, I ain't hyped about it. Alright. Be that way. I saw Aaron was playing it too. You guys gonna play together? I never said I was hyped. Just be fun to be able to play with everyone. Because I'm kind of over the competition in Apex. I fell behind. I fell behind too. Holy shit. The last time I played Apex, I dropped 40 points. I'm having fun in Borderlands not getting my ass ripped off. So I'm with you there. But I got my nephew the legendary for Borderlands 3, and it didn't work. He got his Borderlands 2 legendaries, but not pre-sequel shit. And here's the lesson. Pre-sequel gets treated about like Battleborn. It's, it exists, but it's hanging on by a thread. Like, it's pretty fucking laggy. Shift is always disconnecting, and you're going to be lucky if you get your rewards in there. Which is too bad, because I actually like playing pre-sequel now more than 2. Because at least it's different. 2 is better than pre-sequel. To be fair, but at least it's different. And I like double jumping and butt slamming because you just feel like you can move around better. And I like the characters better. Not the characters as in the canon, but as in the design of the characters. It's, to me, really fun. Aaron and I started playing Borderlands together. New experience for both. There you go. There we go. I mean, you played Borderlands 1 hard, though. So you're getting hooked onto the masterpiece that is Borderlands 2 late. You're just in time, though, really. You're just in time. Don't get yourself too hooked. I ended up putting two and a half years of my life into this. <clears throat> Which is another reason I'm kind of... <laughs> We've been grinding. Never touched the 